Good morning. I'm delighted to welcome you to Mississauga Center. I'm honored to be joined here with the leader of the party, Stephen Del Duca. My name is Samara Malik, and I am your provincial liberal candidate for Mississauga Center. Stephen understands the pain so many in Ontario are feeling right now. He is presenting bold solutions to these urgent problems. He's offering voters a choice in this election, a conservative government that will cut with chaos, only making the biggest and the richest richer, or a liberal government that will invest to make Ontario a place to grow. Please help me in welcoming the next Premier of Ontario, Stephen Del Duca. Thanks, Samira. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, well, good morning, everyone. I am so very happy to be here uh, in the city of Mississauga, particularly in Mississauga Centre, to stand al alongside Samira Malik, who I've come to know over the last many, many months, uh, is someone who is so dedicated to this community, someone who is working hard each and every single day, knocking on doors, building out a team, having those conversations about the issues that are critically important to the hardworking families here in Mississauga Centre, across Peel Region, and frankly, across Ontario. And so, Samir, I want to thank you for what you're doing. And I know come June 2nd, just in a few days, because of your hard work and dedication, and because of the compelling plan that Ontario Liberals have put forward, that you will be elected, and you will be, will be a very, very strong champion for Mississauga Centre at Queen's Park. So thank you. Thank you. And I want to thank all of our friends who are standing here with us today. You see the signs that they're holding. These are signs that I began to first see in my home community of Vaughan many, many, many months ago. And I've actually seen these signs pop up in my touring across many parts of Ontario because there is a clear understanding from people across this province, not just in the GTHA, that the decision that Doug Ford is obsessed with to try to proceed with a $10 billion highway called the 413, despite the fact that all of the independent analysis shows that it will cost billions of dollars, as I said, that it will take so, so, so many years to build, that it will destroy parts of the green belt, wetlands and farmland. It'll put even more of our species that are already at risk further into risk. And here's the worst part of it all. The worst part of it all is the independent study, the independent analysis that I commissioned when I was Minister of Transportation on this very highway came back with a unanimous recommendation for the government to not proceed. And here's why. The recommendation unanimously, again, was don't proceed with this because if built, it will only save a small handful of commuters mere seconds on their daily commute. And we also know, in particular during the midst of or in the midst of an affordability crisis where families here in Mississauga and beyond are feeling a real crunch because the cost of everything has skyrocketed out of control over the last four years under Doug Ford's watch. When you think about what this highway means in real terms, in dollar terms, for the families here in Mississauga and across Ontario, we're talking about $2,000 per household across this province. For households here in Mississauga, households across the GTHA who will not get any congestion relief from this highway, as I talked about just a second ago, it will only save mere seconds on daily commutes in 10 plus years when it might be built. And also for families in Peterborough and in Kitchener-Waterloo and in Thunder Bay and in Ottawa, every single Ontario household will have to cough up $2,000 so Doug Ford can pave over the greenbelt, so Doug Ford can destroy wetlands and farmlands, so Doug Ford can make some of his richest buddies even richer. This is not leadership. This is not what Ontario needs right now. Ontario Liberals, well, we make a different choice. And we have from the very beginning, in particular on this issue. We have consistently said that if elected June 2nd, we will, at our very first cabinet meeting, we will kill Highway 413 once and for all. And we will take those $10 billion, that $2,000 per Ontario household, it's your money and my money. We're going to take it and invest it instead in publicly funded education. We're going to invest it in repairing 4,500 schools here in Mississauga and across Ontario. We're going to invest it in building 200 new schools 
in the communities that need it because they are growing so quickly. And look at Mississauga. Mississauga is a community that knows all about rapid growth, as does Brampton, as does my home community of Woodbridge. These communities, these families, the families that live right here in Mississauga Center in these homes, in these condo towers and apartment buildings that we are standing near, they want their publicly funded education to be exceptional and strong. When their children and grandchildren go into school in the morning, they want the windows in the classrooms to be able to open and close. They want, when they go to the water fountain, like I used to as a kid a long time ago, they want that water to be safe to drink. They want the ventilation systems to make the air safe and clean for our kids and our frontline education workers to breathe. This should not be too much to ask in this day and age. The fact that Doug Ford is determined, obsessed, as I keep saying, with trying to build a highway that will not help, will not help anyone, will cost you so much, instead of making the choice to invest in publicly funded education, makes it crystal clear. He is simply not qualified to do the job of being premier of this province, and he does not have the capacity to grow into the job. He's made that evident over the past four years. So, with only a few days left to go in this election campaign, it is crystal clear on this issue and on so many others. Ontario Liberals are the only option to be able to stop Doug Ford, to stop Doug Ford from trying to build the 413, to stop Doug Ford from making seniors' lives worse by prioritizing for-profit long-term care, to stop Doug Ford from advancing private hospitals rather than public hospitals and public health care. Only Ontario Liberals can stop this from happening. Come Thursday, June the 2nd, electing a strong liberal MPP in Samira Malik right here in Mississauga Centre, and strong liberal MPPs right across this province will mean that there is a strong, progressive, liberal government at Queen's Park who will always put you first <clears throat> and will make sure that Ontario is truly a place to grow. And with that, I'd be happy to take any questions that you might have. Thank you. Okay, we have a number of reporters on the ground, so we're going to take questions here first. A reminder, we have some time constraints today, so it's going to be one <coughs> question and one follow-up, and then I'll pass it over to Andrea on the line. Go ahead. Okay, Sachin Bhatti from Toronto 360 Morning. TV. Morning. Uh, let's say uh, the Ford government come again and the, uh, the elected, and what will be the options uh, for, for you? Will be going in the court, or what are the options for On that? the highway? Yes. Well, look, you, you see the advocates that we have here today. I, I know many of these women and men. Uh, some of them are from York Region, my home community. Some are from Mississauga. You know, I didn't mention this in my opening, but you've given me a, you've given me a reminder by asking this question. We also have municipalities throughout the affected area, including right here in Mississauga, that have said to Doug Ford, stop, stop the 413. It doesn't make sense. Because mayors and councils, including here in Mississauga, understand this reckless decision is not the right way to go. So Ontario Liberals, we're going to keep working as hard as we possibly can until those last ballots are counted on the night of Thursday, June 2nd. So Samir is elected. And so enough Liberal MPPs are elected or candidates are elected to form that strong progressive Liberal government. And when we do that, in just a few days, We'll make sure Highway 413 gets stopped once and for all at our first cabinet meeting. Okay, my follow up. Uh, Sumara is doing very well. I'm uh, in her constituency. And uh, what about, is there any number for the advanced poll for the Liberals? Do you have any numbers till now? What I know, uh, when I've heard, and I've heard this uh, consistently everywhere that I've been over the past week and a half, two weeks since the leaders' debate, there is such a clear sense of very strong and tangible momentum that is gathering around or coalescing around Ontario Liberal candidates because of their hard work and because of how compelling our platform is. Uh, and so I feel like we have a ton of momentum right now, but, but, and this is the important thing, we don't take anything for granted. I learned this many, many years ago growing up from my parents and grandparents. You've heard me say this. It is just about working hard. It's about making sure that we do every single thing and leaving no stone unturned, including right here in Mississauga Center, to make sure Samira wins and we form that strong progressive liberal government come June 2nd. Hi, Stephen. Morning. Uh, I have some questions for you about uh, Bill 124. Okay. You've promised to repeal that bill, yes. but I'm wondering if you've budgeted for any expected compensation increases in the next round of contracts for people like teachers and nurses. Yeah, we have. So look, again, it, it, repealing Bill 124 would be my top legislative priority as Premier of this province. It's a commitment I've made. Many others have made it as well through many, many months. 
We all know that Doug Ford chose to ram this through prior to the pandemic, which basically takes away the rights of frontline health care workers and education workers, including nurses and PSWs, takes away their right to bargain in a free and fair and open way. We'll restore that right. Over four years in our fully costed plan, we have included about $16 billion over four years in contingencies. We've also included, I believe it's more than $3 billion in our entire health care plan, but that number, don't, don't take my word for that one. We'll double check that one. Um, there is sufficient money in both of those, I'll say options, within our fully costed plan to absorb uh, compensation increases that I anticipate would occur through fair and free collective bargaining, especially given what we see with inflation right now. So we've included that as a potential outcome, but repealing Bill 124, first legislative priority for a new liberal government. And you've criticized Bill 124 pretty often, but how is that different from what the liberals did with Bill 115 uh, or the years of net zero uh, compensation framework? Well, well the, the big difference is new leadership, new team. I wasn't even an MPP when Bill 115 was introduced and passed in the legislature. I spent about six years prior to becoming an MPP working for a labor union. I am someone who throughout my life, starting with my grandparents, uh, who were, in the case of my grandfather, was a construction laborer, always believing that free, fair, and open collective bargaining gets you the best solutions for both employers and workers. And that's the approach. It's, it's guided me as a philosophy my entire, my entire life. That's an approach that I would pursue and be proud to pursue as Ontario's Premier. Right. And I just have one more about um, yesterday we talked about your uh, candidate in Chatham-Kent um, that's no longer withdrawing from the race. And it's the, I think, fourth that the Liberals have, have lost during this process. And a lot of them do to kind of stuff that was missed in the vetting and even in particular Audrey's case is related to that as well so I'm just wondering as a leader um, if you have any regrets about how the vetting process went and what you'd want to see change um, in order to kind of support people and not be open well, to, to the criticism. Yeah I know thanks for that question I mean look we every single time we go through an election cycle as a party we, we do take a close look at all of our rules uh, that is why we modernized our nomination what we call our nomination rules of procedure this time uh, it's one of the reasons we were able to field the exceptionally strong team of candidates like Samira Malik here in Mississauga Center. I think that when you look at our vetting process and then look at decisions that I've made as leader with our campaign team, when information has emerged during the campaign, you see that our process was rigorous and that we then moved, I, we then moved quickly and decisively when we learned of things that were uh, that were not in keeping with uh, the principles of tolerance and diversity and supporting equality and expanding opportunity that we hold dear as a party. Uh, you've heard me say this before. I think that stands in stark contrast to how other leaders, including Mr. Ford and Ms. Horvath, uh, have chosen to not move as decisively when they've had some challenges around some of their candidates. In Mr. Ford's case, including two members of his caucus, two members of his caucus that he appointed to be parliamentary assistants. So I think the modern test of leadership is when you receive information that makes it clear something needs to be done, you need to move decisively. That's what I've chosen to do. We will always, as we always do, take a look at our rules of procedure and how we do these processes after the election. In the meantime, we're going to focus on working real hard to win this election and elect that strong, progressive, liberal government. Thank you. Good morning, Stephen. Good morning. Um, I want to ask you about comments you made yesterday on your candidate in uh, Chatham, Kent, Leamington, who uh, uh, withdrawn from the election. Um, you said that uh, Andrea Horvath uh, and the NDP are cons consistently launching personal attacks against strong female candidates running for other parties. Um, Ms. Horvath came out um, later in the afternoon with a press conference. She said that, I'm sorry, but Mr. Del Duca needs to walk in a woman's shoes to see what sexism really is. She took um, you know, issue with what you said. Do you have a response to, 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 her, to her response, I guess, and, and do you take back what the comments you made yesterday? So first of all, I'm pretty sure you and I know uh, members of the media uh, have copies of Audrey Festeriga's statement that she released yesterday. I've known, as I said yesterday, Audrey for years. She is a woman of principle. Uh, I'm sorry that she's had to go through the kind of attacks that she's had to go through. I, I respect and support her decision. And my statements from yesterday were also made very clearly. They stand. Today, what I'm here to talk about, as I have consistently since becoming leader of the Ontario Liberal Party, is taking the fight to Doug Ford where it belongs. As I say repeatedly, and is evident from the momentum that's gathering and coalescing around the Ontario Liberal team, uh, there is only one option to stop Doug Ford from continuing to destroy this province that we love so much, and that is to, to elect local Liberal MPPs, to elect a, a stable, strong, progressive Liberal government to Queen's Park so we can build this province up and make it a place to grow. And I'll keep... I'll keep on that fight all the way through till June 2nd and beyond. 
And I'm wondering, because you are campaigning against, I, I guess, Highway 413, um, build schools, not Highway 413. That's right. The other parties over the past few weeks have been, you know, releasing um, bits and pieces of your other candidate, of other candidates saying, you know, that we'll build Highway 413 later or that this is something that would, you know, happen, you know, we're, it's right now you're focusing on not building high, Highway 413 right now. So I guess... No, no, not, not just right now. I was the one who stopped it seven years ago the first time. Is this a long-term yeah. commitment? For you not to build <laughs> Highway 4 You know, other politicians and leaders, they like to talk a really good game. There is only one individual running to be premier of this province who has a demonstrated and proven track record of actually stopping this highway. No one else. So Doug Ford is obsessed with building it. We know why. We, everybody in this province knows why. It's not going to give any one of these people living in these homes that I can see in Mississauga Centre any kind of congestion or commuter relief. It's going to cost more than $10 billion and take 10 years. You know, I tell people, I'll be 49 in just a few weeks. I'd be eligible for CPP before this highway could even open, and that's if it actually gets built. That makes no sense. We need real relief right now. That, that's why we're going to introduce and, and, and deliver on Buck a Ride province-wide. But what I also know is while other leaders talk about their opposition to the 413, I'm the only person who stopped it. I stopped it as Minister of Transportation. I appointed the independent panel. That panel came back unanimously and said, it doesn't make sense, it will not help people in this province, it's a waste of money, and it's dangerous for our natural environment. That's why I have said repeatedly that at our very first cabinet meeting, after June 2nd, the new Ontario Liberal government will stop Highway 413 once and for all, and then we'll invest money in schools like the one that I can see here in Mississauga Centre, making sure their windows can open and close, making sure the water is safe to drink and the air is safe to breathe. That's what the people of Ontario want. That's what the people of Ontario deserve. The only person who doesn't get that, doesn't care about that, is Doug Ford, and that's why he's got to go. So you're not going to be building the Highway 413 at any point within your... Could within I your... make this any more clear? I'm the guy who stopped it the first time, and I'll stop it again. Thank you. Okay, we're going to move over to questions on the line. Andrea, over to you. Okay, so we've got reporters on the line here. We're going to open it up. Uh, we're going to be doing one question, one follow-up today, because we are a little bit tighter on time. But I'm going to start out with Siobhan Morris from CTV. Hi, Stephen. Hey, uh, I'm wondering if you... I'm wondering if you're planning to spend any time in your home riding this weekend, given all the polling looks like that race <laughs> remains pretty tight. Well, I, I live in my home riding. I've lived there for more than 30 years, uh, and I was there this morning as I drove here to beautiful Mississauga Center. I have been knocking on doors in my riding, as has my wife, uh, my daughters. My 83-year-old dad was out just a few days ago with my older brother knocking on doors, having a great time. And I'll be back in the riding uh, on more than one occasion between now and Election Day. As I've said repeatedly, it's a community that I love so, so much. It's a community that my wife and I have chosen to raise our young daughters in. Uh, and as the former MPP for six years, I worked very hard, and I believe my neighbors understand how hard I worked to deliver the Vaughan Hospital, the subway opening, the 427 extension, six new publicly funded schools, a 10-bed residential hospice. So. For me, it's about what I was able to deliver in my time as an MPP that my neighbors do know about, and just working hard until those ballots are finished being counted on Thursday, June 2nd. And I, I know you're campaigning still, you know, making the push for a liberal majority government, but realistically, that's not going to happen. We saw your predecessor, <laughs> uh, we saw that your predecessor in the days before the last vote be honest with Ontario voters and say the Liberal Party will not form government please help us elect seats. Can we expect any kind of a message like that from you in the next few days? Well, I, look, I, I'll say this as respectfully as I can. The people of Ontario haven't spoken yet, Siobhan. And, and I think it's so, so important for us to respect democracy and to let them have their say. Uh, they will have their say this Thursday, June the 2nd, or I guess it's next Thursday, June the 2nd now. Uh, what I feel very clearly, whether it's here in Mississauga Centre or elsewhere, is a very strong sense of momentum because people understand, in particular since the leaders debate, that if you want to stop Doug Ford, and thousands and thousands of, and thousands of Ontarians do, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, there is one option. The only way to stop Doug Ford is to choose the new Ontario Liberal team with the new Ontario Liberal plan. And throughout my life, I've never stopped working hard. It is literally what my parents and grandparents taught me and my brothers and my sister to do. It's the Ontario way, and so we'll just keep doing it every single step of the way. And I have exceptional confidence and faith in the people of Ontario, but I want them to have their say Thursday, June 2nd, and they will. Hey, we're going to go over to Richard Southern now. Over to you, Richard. 
Mr. Del Duca, good morning. Yesterday, in regards to your now former candidate for Chatham Kent Leamington, you said the NDP are out there attacking women and that they were questioning her integrity. Uh, from what I could see, the NDP only questioned the uh, authenticity of her um, uh, of her uh, the signatures on her uh, application. How is questioning signatures attacking women, sir? So, you know, Richard, my, my statement from yesterday stands. Uh, I've known Audrey Festeriga for a number of years. She is a person of incredible integrity. I'm disappointed that she had to deal with the personal attacks that she did have to deal with. Um, I understand why she made the decision. And of course, again, I respect it. Uh, you have her statement. I believe you have her statement. You heard my statements yesterday. Uh, what I'm here to do today in Mississauga Center and what I will keep doing until Thursday, June 2nd, is to make sure people understand that it is so, so important in this moment when the chips are down and the stakes are high in Ontario, that we have to stop Doug Ford so that he can't privatize our public health care system, so that he can't continue to destroy publicly funded education, so that he can't build Highway 413 to reward his friends and undermine what we hold dear in this province. And that's the fight that I have been engaged in for two years now as Ontario Liberal Party leader, and it's the fight that I will be focused on the rest of this campaign. You just said you would take swift action as leader if, if, if anything untoward came up. Um, did Ms. Festerica, did she use an incorrect signatures on her application, sir, number one? And number two, what were these personal attacks? Because I don't remember any. Yeah, so again, let me just say really clearly, because Richard, I don't think you've asked this one before. Uh, I said from the very beginning that Elections Ontario has a responsibility to investigate complaints that come forward, and I believe Elections Ontario should have conducted its work. Ms. Festeriga, Audrey, made the decision because of the attacks that she was confronted with, because she wanted to protect her incredible personal integrity, to withdraw from the race yesterday. You have her statement. You've heard my statements. In the meantime, the most important thing for us to do as Ontarians is to make sure that Doug Ford is stopped Thursday, June the 2nd. There is such a clear choice in this election campaign. Four more years of being held down and dragged backwards by Doug Ford, who just doesn't get it and doesn't care enough to try to get it, or the Ontario Liberal team, the new team, with our compelling plan to make sure our province is a place to grow, a new Ontario Liberal team that will stop Highway 413 at our very first cabinet meeting. Okay, and we've got time for one more. So we're gonna go over to Cynthia Mulligan now. Go ahead, Cynthia. Good morning. Morning, Cynthia. Stephen, polling suggests that, yes, you are certainly gaining momentum from the 2018 numbers. And, but, however, it's also showing that your support is very condensed in, in a smaller number of ridings and not right across the province and certainly not enough to come in first place. Uh, it, it, what is your response to that? Because you keep <laughs> saying we're gaining momentum, yes. However, is it, is it really momentum province-wide? Well, look, I think it's momentum province-wide. I've been to Ottawa. I was in Clarence Rockland just the other day surveying the damage and the aftermath of that horrible, horrible storm that many Ontario families had to face, and I believe 10 or 11 Ontarians lost their lives in. Uh, I've been down to London. I've been up to Thunder Bay. I've been to Sudbury, North Bay, all points in between, and we're not done yet. We have more places still to go. And literally, without exception, everywhere I go, I do hear from our candidates like Samira and, and, and all of our candidates about what they're hearing at the doors. And what they're hearing at the doors is that people don't want Doug Ford. They are deeply, deeply concerned about what four more years of Doug Ford will mean for them, for their school-aged kids, for their aging parents and grandparents, for our province's natural environment. So they recognize, as I do, because we're feeling it in a very real way, there is momentum and we don't stop working. Ontarians don't stop working. My parents and grandparents didn't stop working uh, as they supported me and my brothers and my sister. So we're going to do the same thing that Ontarians do. We're going to keep working. We're going to work in every single riding across this province. I'm going to keep working. And then we will let the people of Ontario decide, as it should be, in our democracy. The NDP, though, is pretty much saying they're the ones with the momentum and that they're doing really well and they're the ones that can, can beat Doug Ford. Uh, Green Party leader Mike Schreiner claims he's on momentum and he's going to at least double, maybe triple his party of one. Are we all just being fed rainbows and unicorns here? I mean, how much of this is actually realistic? I don't know. My daughter's like rainbows and unicorns. So, uh, but no, in all seriousness, I think uh, I'm just telling you what I'm feeling. And what I heard as I walked over from, from uh, the parking lot with Samira, what she's feeling at the doors here in Mississauga Center, what I see in my home community, 
uh, there is a very clear sense that four more years of Doug Ford would be an unmitigated disaster in this province for the things, again, that we hold dear, our core public services like education and health care. Uh, does that mean that any one of us knows for sure what's going to happen on June 2nd, including pollsters? The answer is no. That's why we have election campaigns. That's why we engage in the conversations that we are having locally at every single doorstep and province-wide from the leaders' perspectives. So we're going to keep working hard all the way down to the wire. I, I can see the momentum. I can feel the momentum. And I think it's most clear to me that it's because there is a very stark choice. You think about this. Only one team in this election has had a fair, forward-looking, fully costed, and consistent platform from day one. And the, the common thread that runs through our Ontario Liberal platform is that we recognize that, especially given the past two years, so many people in this province are still hurting. They're still struggling. They need help. They need a premier and a government at Queen's Park who understands they need help and cares enough to deliver on that help. Unlike Doug Ford, who, when you listen to him talk, when you look at his last budget, when you watch how he's campaigning in that really tight bubble that he's afraid to get out of, uh, you see that Doug Ford wants to skate right by how people in Mississauga and across Ontario are still struggling. I don't. Ontario Liberals don't. We want to help. And so I tell people across this province, help is on the way, hope is on the way. We're going to keep working hard right until June the 2nd. Okay, we're going to close it there. Stephen, any last comments before we go? Yeah, just to reiterate, Highway 413 needs to be stopped. I've been saying this for years. We know that there are significant needs that we have in the state of good repair in our schools across this province. We also know Highway 413 will not help Ontario families. It's actually going to cost you, whether you live here in Mississauga or in any other community across this province, $2,000 of your hard-earned tax dollars, your family's money, to build a highway that will not help you, will not help anyone, will only help make Doug Ford's richest friends even richer. That's not good enough. The Ontario Liberal Party is making a different choice for you to build new schools, to repair our schools, because our kids and our province deserve that. Together, we'll make sure that Ontario is truly a place to grow. Thanks very much. Appreciate it.